hello everyone and welcome back to my channel i am your girl melinda j and i know you probably saying girl what's going on <laughs> where have you been okay um to say the least i am going through major transition mode on my end in the background so just please bear with me with the content that i pulled out i don't know if i mentioned this in the last video that um i will be pulling back on the daily uploads and just do at least two to three videos per week um if god's willing <laughs> and then of course whenever it is settled on my end i'll get back into routine um other than that i wanted to talk about the subject in regards to the tory a uh, boat a uh, buoy situation of the updates of her passing and the let's see how let's see yeah i want to talk about the world champion sprinter and three-time olympic medalist tori bowie passing from complications of childbirth according to the opt op you know, autopsy report obtained by usa today sports because that's where i'll be reading the subject from and i'll be sliding i'll um i'll be putting that along with the sudden passing of miss jackie O, dc young flies um life uh, lifetime partner as well because the two correlate with each other by the angle that I'm going to come with you all with. All right. And it, I sat on this for as long as I could, because again, I wanted to allow the information to pour out that way. Whenever I present you all the information, it'll be updated as much as possible because I know with the constant updating videos, it could get a little tiresome at some point. So with that being said, the angle that I'll be coming to you all today in regards to these two young women in, uh, in regards to either childbirth or just going through cosmetic surgery or just any type of surgery in general, um, it relates to patient advocacy, okay? Patient advocacy. And this is in, and with patient advocacy, this goes in with everyone that goes to the doctor or just seeking medical attention. But with this particular topic that I'll be discussing along with these two women in similar but different situations, it really needs to be addressed at this moment. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the content. Before I break this down with you, uh, break down the article with you all, I just wanted to give you all some key, key points as well as key questions. That way I could be able to, you know, put this in the short, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so who are we talking about in regards to patient advocacy? In regards to patient advocacy, we're talking about Tori Bowie. All right. And what happened? Well, originally it was reported that she passed away um, suddenly, but the reasoning or the cause of the transition was left undetermined at the time. So, and, and now it has been updated that it's been revealed that she suffered from childbirth complications. Uh, that resorted from respiratory distress, AKA lack of oxygen, to eclampsia, which is a rare condition which can cause seizure, seizures. And there is another term called preeclampsia as well. But from what they were, as the reports were saying that she was suffering from eclampsia. All right. When, okay, it was, when did this happen it was originally reported on may 3rd 2023 and it has been updated with the cause of transition 
um, as of June 13th, 2023. And where did this happen? It happened in Orange County, Florida, specifically Water Garden, Florida. And she, and she was found deceased when sheriff deputies conducted a welfare check at home after receiving reports of her not being seen or heard within the uh, from several days. So why did this happen? Where did it all go wrong? So this is the questions that I am asking myself as I'm reading these articles or as we're being updated with this particular report. And so my questions was, when did it all go wrong? Who was with her at the time of her passing or who was with her through her pregnancy journey specifically? Who was her advocate? Uh, why was she alone? Was she alone? Does she live with anyone? Was Where was her child's father at the time? Why did reports said that she passed away with childbirth complications, but she was found um, unresponsive at home? But then I did a little more research and, and that kind of like answered my question a little bit. Um, also, did she have a midwife or doula to assist her in regards to before, during, or after birth? Okay. And then how could have this been prevented? Number one, patient advocacy. Number two, doula's a midwife. Three, we got to address the birth and mortality rates amongst Black women. Okay. And of course... That's all I have so far. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dig into the article so I can, so we can dissect this together, okay? Share the screen. And I'm gonna stop my video here. All right, so is this is from USA Today and it says US Olympian Tori Bowie um, or buoy pa uh, passed away from complications of childbirth autopsy found. And it reads, world champion sprinter, three-time Olympic medalist, Tori Bowie passed away from complications of childbirth, according to an autopsy re a report obtained by USA Today Sports. The report from Orange County, Florida, medical examiner office said Bowie had, or buoy, had a well-developed fetus, meaning um, the baby was well-developed, okay? It was basically full term. As she was estimated to be eight months pregnant and undergoing labor at the time of her passing in May, officials said possible complications but buoy had include respiratory distress, AKA lack of oxygen, and eclampsia, when a person develops seizures following a sudden spike in high blood pressure during pregnancy, according to a Cleveland Clinic. Eclampsia typically occurs after the 20 week of pregnancy, is where and affects less than 3% of people with pre-eclampsia. Pre Eclampsia can cause complications during pregnancy and requires emergency medical care. The Cleveland Clinic says the manner of passing was ruled natural according to medical examiner. Bowie's passing came as a shock to the track and field community. The 32-year-old was found deceased in her home in Winter Garden, Florida on May 2nd. Bowie was found when Orange County, Florida Sheriff's deputy conducted a welfare welfare check at home after receiving reports a woman in her early 30s had not been seen or heard from in several days we lost a client dear friend daughter and sister icon management uh, incorporated the sports agency that represented buoy wrote on twitter tori was a champion a beacon of light that shines so bright we're truly heartbroken and our prayers are with the family and friends. Bowie won three medals at the 2016 Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro, including silver in the 100 meter dash and bronze in the 200 meter. She also ran anchor leg 
in the women's four by 100 relay in which team usa won gold by the end of 2017 Bowie was a world champion in both women women's 100 and four by 100 relay all right so and also we're going to take a look at this let's see just faq just the faq's the rate of women passing during childbirth surged by 40 uh, percent in the u.s here's why and i'm assuming that's a video a new federal announcement okay so yeah that is a video all right when it comes to miss jackie o and again i specifically waited as long as i could because i know there was going to be a lot of reports a lot of rumors a lot of conspiracies about this particular situation and again i am aware of the um of people um bringing their conclusions that she was sacrificed and some more things however i'm going to stick to this particular matter in a whole different angle because again this happens with everyday people and sometimes it takes a uh, um sometimes it takes a figure a public figure to go through something uh, for it to shine some light on on us in regards to whatever situation that they're going through so this is why uh this is how i tailor my content i figure out um what lessons can we learn from the situation and how can we avoid what has transpired with the individual that we're talking about all right so it says more details emerge about the wild and out star miss jackie o's passing at the age of 32 keep in mind both of these women are healthy individuals now healthy individuals and they passed away um at the same age as well that is very daunting to say the least so it reads the form of Wild and Out star Miss Jackie O has passed away. She was 32. Wild and Out posted the news to the show's Instagram page on Thursday. We are deeply saddened by the passing of Miss Jacqueline Smith, known to the world as Jackie O, a talented Wild and Out family member whose impact will forever treasured. I believe it's supposed to be be treasured and missed. Jackie O was a loving friend and beloved colleague of the Wild and Out cast throughout five seasons. More importantly, she was a tremendous mother to three beautiful children, a BET Media Group person spoke, spokesperson wrote. The BET Media Group extends our sincere condolences to the Smith family, DC Young Fly, B. Simone, Nick Cannon, all friends who love and care for Jackie O during this difficult time. The MTV Wild and Out star reportedly passed away in Miami where she allegedly traveled to undergo a quote-unquote mommy makeover surgery. According to a since-deleted social media post, her cause of passing was not yet determined at the time. Um, Jackie O, born Jacqueline Smith, was staying at the Homewood Suites by Hilton, Miami, downtown Brick Brickle, where she was found unresponsive in the evening or on the evening of May 31st, according to Miami Police Department incident report obtaining by the Times. Police were dispatched and she was transported to Mercy Hospital, where despite resuscitation efforts, she was pronounced um, deceased shortly before midnight. Uh, the case is still under investigation. According to Stanford Medicine, a mommy makeover surgery entails a combination of various procedures tailored to patients' preferences and can include any combination of the following, uh, tummy tuck, breast augmentation, breast lift, liposuction, a vaginal rejuvenation surgery, but typically the standard mommy makeover entails a tummy tuck and the breast augmentation. Smith had been in a relationship with DC Young Fly since 2015. They met while both uh, were co-starring in Wild and Out at the time. Smith had been a Wild and Out girl for two seasons and DC Young Fly was a rookie on the hip hop variety series. 
The couple shared three children, Nova, Nala, and Prince. In 2017, the interview with DJ Small's Eyes, Smith opened up about pregnancy, her love for children, and the pressure to snap back after having children. I looked into the mirror and said, damn, I need to lose some damn weight because my stomach looking crazy, but y'all know it happens. I had a baby, she said. D.L. Hughley responded to the news on Instagram, posting a photo of DC Young Fly and writing, my heart breaks for my brother, DC Young Fly, and his children. What you see on TV is only a silver of who this young brother is. He is a strong, solid, determined young man of faith. He's a family man, which is why this cut so deep. We love you. My family and I send every ounce of love we have in prayers for strength to you and your family through this time. Stay strong in your faith, brother. Cardi B shared a photo of Jackie with her three children to her Instagram stories right in my heart for them beautiful babies. End quote. All right. So you have one individual, Miss Tori. She is was undergoing childbirth uh, complications while she was at home that resorted to her demise. And then, of course, you have Miss Jackie O that went to Miami for a mommy makeover. And it seems, apparently, it seems like she had been released to have aftercare at the location that she was at. But, and the questions that I have in the back of my head as the reports was coming out was, why was she alone? Who was her advocate at the time? Who was her advocate as she was the patient at the time okay because it's possible that she may have undergo some type of infection that could cause um because you have to be very careful with aftercare in regards to your body going through those changes like that you know with going through childbirth or just carrying a child in general, your body is already going through a traumatic experience. And then of course, um, go to the, um, go to have a surgery. That's another added, you know, traumatic event that's happening as well to your body. Um, so to say the least, uh, with these two women, again, where was their patient advocate at the moment? Where were they? Because no one is speaking from their point of view as they had transitioned to the spiritual realm, okay? So this brings my attention to why is patient advocacy important to all of us as a whole because I have went through situations personally as well as with individuals with my uh, uh, within my family unit that you literally have to take someone to whatever professional that you are seeking at the moment just to make sure you're getting what you're supposed to get getting what you need so you can get back to normalcy when it comes to your body, mentally, spiritually, physically, and emotionally. Now, this is the uh, foundation, National Patient Advocate Foundation, where you can search for information, understanding the issue, getting involved, initiatives, resources, as well as events that's surrounding your area. Now, I'm going to switch over to this article here. And this was it, this is from Tulane University School of Public Health and Tropical Me- Medicine, and this is a blog, obviously. And I'm gonna go through it with y'all on why it's important to have a patient advocate um, in regards to healthcare and any other sorts of medical attention that you're seeking. Why is it important? Now it says, in today's complex healthcare system is increasingly fragmented. Patients seeing multiple specialists scrambling to keep track of treatment plans, 
confusing medical bills and insurance coverage pose challenges to even the most informed patient. Um, healthcare advocacy can play a vital role in easing the burden patients experiencing while navigating the healthcare system. Issues healthcare advocacy can address. Managing health uh, care can be challenging at the best of times. For older adults with cognitive impairment, for people battling symptoms of exhaustion, navigating one's own health care can be daunting. The result, patients put off getting the care they need or do not seek care at all. Patients and their caregivers may spend a lot of time pouring over insurance forms over or other documents written in jargon they find difficult to follow. They can easily uh, misunderstood diagnosis and treatment options such as misunderstandings can result in less effective use of medical services. For example, patients may undergo duplicate diagnostics tests, miss appointments, or take wrong medicine dosages. Hard to inter uh, interpret, uh, interpret Health insurance coverage sometimes result in patients not taking full advantage of what is available for them. Other times, patients mistakenly pay in inaccurate medical bills containing errors or charges that were actually covered by their health insurance plan. While the national conversation of healthcare has focused on ways to address these problems, many patients need individual guidance. Healthcare advocates can help. What is a healthcare advocate or a patient advocate, to say the least? Healthcare advocates give patients their families direct, customized assistance in navigating a healthcare system. A healthcare advocate's role entails helping patients access healthcare, educating patients so they can make well informed healthcare decisions, guiding patients through their medical care, insurance questions, and administrative and legal tasks. Now, how do patients and medical care advocates connect? Sometimes patients and their families hire independent health advocates or individuals who work for advocacy organizations, employers, insurance company, and hospitals may also offer patients health advocates. The types of healthcare advocacy, the healthcare system, many, Many layers have created need for several types of healthcare advocacy. In fact, a Harvard Business Review analyst found that 52% of patients in the U.S. cannot navigate the healthcare system complexities without help. Whether assisting patients concerned about unclear diagnosis or clarifying confusing medical charges, healthcare advocates offer a range of services such as medical care navigations which consists of communicating with health care providers settle and setting coordinating and attending appointments speaking up about patients rights identifying health resources and making referrals explaining confusion medical information clarifying diagnosis and conditions coordinating care between specialists there's also medical billing navigation services that entails reviewing medical bills for accuracy, negotiating bills with providers, or getting bill errors adjusted. There's also advocacy in the health insurance navigation, including figuring out the coverage guaranteed by insurance plans, Medicare benefits, and veterans benefits, explaining co-pays and co-insurance to patients, investigating in-network and out-of-network providing options, advising patients on selecting health plans and insurance policies, researching additional potential benefits such as long-term uh, ins uh, long care insurance, informing patients about wellness benefits such as preventing care and use of telehealth, and there's also placement navigation where it consists of assisting uh, patients getting admitted to or discharged from hospitals. There's also coordinating patients transfers to nursing homes, 
assistant living or rehabilitation centers. There's also advocacy um, navigating of older adult services such as home care, transportation, meals and housing. And lastly, there is legal navigation in regards to assisting patients with legal concerns and issues, advocating for patients who receive poor care at medical facility and helping patients with disability findings, okay? So in the grand scheme of things, this is why advocacy is important in healthcare. Of course, examining the healthcare policy and patient support roles makes it easy to understand why advocacy is important in healthcare. Large scale advocacy focuses on changing the system while advocacy on an individual level endeavors to speak on the patient's behalf. That is where I, the angle that I'm leading towards with this message in regards to the situation between Miss Jackie O and Miss Tori Bowie. All right. So, to say the least, let me see if I have anything else that I want to splurge on to y'all. And of course, I will include the links in the description box below so you can check it out during your leisure. Now, if you want me to do a separate video on just reading this whole entire blog in regards to patient advocacy, just feel free to leave a comment down below, read the whole article, and I'll make a separate video um, reading just reading this whole entire article with you all so because i'm pretty sure there are some auditory learners out there and y'all probably process information more when you like to hear somebody read it to you all right so without further ado i also want to point out this to you all as well in regards to this series on D, uh, on BET that came out in 2021. It came out on February 21st, 2021. And it is called Disrupt and Dismantle by Soledad um, O'Brien. Now she did do, it was a six part, 40 minute series in regards to the disparity amongst um, the black community. And the last episode, it was called The Cost of Black Motherhood in Mississippi. Okay, very informative episode. And within that episode, um, Soledad talks to black moms and their advocates in Mississippi to find out how the government and the healthcare system can address the high maternal and infant mortor- mortality rates in the state. Because, again, it falls back to the situation with Miss Tori Bowie. No matter what your your economic demographic is looking like as a black individual, as a black young woman um, individual, you have we have to be mindful uh, and at least have someone in our corner that is going to ask those questions and be by our side through thick and thin in the process of either going through childbirth, pregnancy, or any type of medical, um, uh, um, seek uh, any, any type of medical attention that we're seeking out because they think it's a mother game out here in regards to whenever we are stressing, um, the concern of what we are feeling with our bodies. Okay. So, Whew, that was a mouthful. So to say the least, again, it poses the question to me in regards to the situation with these two ladies is why were they alone in this? Who was with them while they were going through this situation? All right. When, in regards to Tori's situation, did she have a doula? Did she have a midwife? Um, uh, was she thinking about having a doula and mid- mid- midwife at the time of of her pregnancy or or um or childbirth? That or was she scared to go to the hospital due to what happens to black women at at these hospitals and them undergoing childbirth and stuff like that? Um, 
where was her child's father at the time when this happened i have not heard anything in regards to that um where is her support system and this goes for both of them and this situation applies to everybody. Where is y'all support system when y'all are going through these type of situations? Okay? Times are getting hard and people are leaving this earth in warp speed. Where is your support system when you need them? Okay? And if you don't have no support system, find you a support system. Reach out to me, girl. Because, you know... Me and my my good sis, we run the mon the, we run the mommy honeycomb private group on Facebook. Okay, just put in the search engine mommy honeycomb, and it's been a minute since I post on there because we have went to Disney <laughs> the past in the past couple of weeks. No, not not this past couple of weeks, but the week before that we was in Disney. So. And I'm going to tell you based on personal experience for me, you know, if it wasn't for my support su support system, you know, I would probably not have been here as well. Luckily, I had people by my side that asked the right questions. And then when it comes to Tori Bowie and being in the situation that she was in and she had eclampsia, I had preeclampsia, okay? I did not experience having high blood pressure until I got pregnant with my son, okay? And then on down the line, I figured out uh, my grandmother had it. My paternal grandmother had it when she was pregnant with my father. So um, I'm assuming that is a that could be a hereditary thing to look out for whenever you are asking questions about this. I might as well sm uh, slide in LaToya forever up in this camp too because she just recently announced that she was pregnant as well and she stated within her video that she is scared because she didn't she does not want the same thing that happened to um I believe it was Samia that she had complications with to ha um to have the same type of effect with the current baby that is cooking in her in her oven right now uh, the bun that is cooking in her oven at this time so the fact that she's saying that she's scared at the moment because she doesn't want anything repeated as such fast forward and over to Miss Tori Bowie she had suffered complications due to her um, being in childbirth okay and it seems like nobody was there helping her or there was nobody around her at the time during her passing when this uh, when this happened, which is why, again, we need to establish support systems uh, in regards to any situation that we're going through in our lives. Again, whenever I was undergoing my pregnancy, um, I, was since I had preeclampsia, I was visiting the doctor twice a week, I believe so, leading towards me having my child. So, uh, and that's just to make sure the baby is growing, but also to keep check of my blood pressure, making sure it wasn't too high or too low um, at the time. So with that, uh, uh, again, thankfully, since I had my support system of people that was asking questions and also sticking by my side throughout my pregnancy, I would I probably would not be here. Okay. And I show gratitude in every day about that. Because again, this happens with everyday people, uh, regular folk. And the fact that, that it happens to a healthy, a very healthy young lady, right? A healthy, accomplished young lady. That is very eye-opening, okay? And it also just peeled back the curtain of, you know, just because somebody's body is physically looking fit 
you don't know what complications that uh, complications they have um underlying conditions that they have the same goes for a person that you could that we consider is obese they may be the most healthiest individuals okay so to say the least we don't need to judge people um about how they look don't judge a book by its cover because you don't know what that person's going on behind uh going through behind the scenes the fact that miss jackie o uh felt like she had to snap back into her original um body or her original physique physique before she had the first child and the fact that we are still hanging tight on the snapback mentality we need to stop that asap because that applies the same situation whenever um young ladies are undergoing breast augment or well, well not breast augmentation but um having implants or doing bbls and stuff like that like you still gotta look out for freshman 15 and then whenever you have kids you gonna gain weight anyways you're gonna gain weight and then of course it's up to you on whether you want to have your original size or just want to keep a little bit of that weight but still be toned enough to where you are still healthy uh have a health healthy um uh body mass there we go bmi and and of course a healthy lifestyle to follow suit with that because lifestyle environment nutrition all that plays into a factor of a human's body mentally spiritually physically and emotionally so the fact that you know, again miss jackie o uh it is really unf unfortunate that she felt the need to do that in regards to her to feel uh better ab about herself and we really just going to have to crack down and change the narrative around that we need to accept our body as is and if we want to make adjustments on it fine you can do it in moderation but don't indulge in it too much to where you are un are unrecognizable or you end up being in the upper room all right so again everybody start building up your support system when it comes to seeking medical attention or anything else because if you're not able to advocate for yourself then somebody else will and it may not be the person that you want <laughs> and you definitely don't want to have somebody that does not take liking over your physical well-being or just your well-being in general to make the decision for you all because you did not have a support system or a patient advocate to basically speak for you and fight for you while you're not capable to fight for yourself at the moment all right so i'm gonna leave it at that and feel free to leave your comments and thoughts down in the comment section below on um in this regards for these two women and their situation again i'm gonna send nothing but healing love strength and healing energy to the families that are involved in this situation whether it is done in a sinister thing or not um again children are on the line we have miss bowie her daughter has ended up surviving um she is the the survivor the baby is is living of course um so we gotta keep our keep her uplifted and protected at all costs and then also for miss jackie o's children and uh, jackie on dc on fly's children as well got to keep them protected as well i'm pretty sure they are protected and they definitely will be protected because their mama is definitely going to make sure that is going to happen in the spiritual realm to say the least all right so without further ado i'll leave y'all to it um like share comment and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already hit that notification bell so you know the next time i upload a video and always stay positively free okay